you might have seen that uh, a living creature like a fly is like a sponge itself. So there are limits to what we can see, but then we can build apparatus that let, let us see things that are even smaller. And, uh, but there are still limits to those apparatus. So there are some dark patches in the middle of some of these cells, and that's, those, those are chromosomes that they with DNA. And you might ask, can I, can I look in a really good microscope and see what the structure of DNA is? And the answer is no. DNA is so small that you actually can't see it with a regular microscope, a microscope that uses light. So there are limits to what you can see using light. Uh, however, that doesn't mean that there are limits to visualizing what DNA looks like. So you've all probably all seen images of DNA. Right? This is the, the genetic model. And they look something like that. So here's three different representations, three different visualizations of DNA. These are not pictures of DNA. These are not photographs of DNA. But they're representations, visualizations. And they're helpful. So DNA doesn't necessarily look like any of these. But the visualizations help you to conceive of what DNA is like in some sense. So for example, you may know that DNA has this interesting double helix, this sort of twisted ladder structure. And the, the rungs of the ladder are made up, each rung is made up of two terms. And so they represent these two chemicals here by, uh, and actually there's three chemicals in each slide, but there are four chemicals total. So um, they represent these four total chemicals making up uh, the one slide here as blue, yellow, green, and red. It's four different colors. Now these chemicals don't actually have those colors, but you can't see them. But this is a way of visualizing the fact that there are four different chemicals that go into making up the rungs of DNA. Now we didn't have to use colors, we could use letters, typically not, right? So there's four letters, C, G, A, and T, and those represent so uh, this is a way in which we can visualize something that we can't see. Uh, so you can ask the question, is there any way of, uh, let's say, taking a picture of DNA, even not you know, using a, a microscope that we can look into? And there is, there are certain, <coughs> certain ways. So this here is a picture of DNA. It's a very famous picture of DNA taken before the structure was known. And this is taken not using visible light, it's using X-ray. And you have to process this x-rays and then you know, figure out exactly what you're looking at. You can't look at this picture and see the structure. You have to know exactly how this picture was made. And you have to be able to translate that into the structure. And it was a key to take this picture for people to be able to translate this, uh, this information into this field, this whole structure that they visualize. And that was the whole, the whole game 60 years ago uh, when Watson and Craig were, were trying to construct a visualization of the index. So here's the model, they built a model. And like DNA is not this big, right? But this is supposed to represent what's happening at the very small level. They were trying to visualize what DNA was like. And it was a very important discovery because once they visualized, oh, DNA looks like this, it became clear to them how DNA could replicate, which means how cells could replicate, how you could replicate, right? The fact that you could take this ladder and you could unzip it and have half a run on each side, and you can make copies of those. So once we had a visualization for something in the physical world, it allowed us to make breakthroughs that we couldn't make our thing before. Visualization is really important. So, um, this is 60 years ago. You might ask, well, are there better sort of microscopes which allow us to sort of visualize things that are even smaller? And yeah, since then, people have developed even better microscopes. So, this is an image taken using what's called a scanning tunnel microscope. And each of these balls here are actually half, which are silicon half. So, um, the atoms, I should say, are not just sort of a yellowish-orange hue. They're not actually that color. These individual atoms don't have a color. They just rendered the image this way. They had to put some color on the image. The individual atoms don't have color. But this visualization allows us to picture the atoms in some sense, in some important way. Right? It lets you know that these atoms are engraved in some kind of pattern. It lets us know that things are discrete at this very small scale. So um, that's a that's the sort of cutting edge microscopy of how, how well you can see. 